Okay, guys, we have a package come in. Now, this one, I know who sent this. I know what's in it. And uh, let me see if I can find the address to it. No. Jump date. Okay. Um, it just came to me. So, anyways, uh, this was from... If you guys remember Lubaka, of course you do. Well, his owner, Eric... You remember him, uh, wanted to do something nice and, and get us another puffer. So he talked to his buddy Manny at the pet, at the pet store right close to him. And I'll, I'll put all the information in the links below. But they shipped us another puffer. All right, let me see if I can hold it up better. There he is. What a little cutie, huh? And... Look at that. And then I was talking about buying a second one, or, you know, now, so we'd have a trio of them. And uh, Eric's like, well, let me let me talk to him. And next thing you know, they got a box showing up here. So now we have the baby Mabu puffers. Aren't they just adorable? Look how cute that is. Oh, yeah, he's swimming. Okay. Well, you're a fat one, huh? He's trying to hide. So we got them both. They come from Manny. So thank you, Manny, very much. I will put the link to everything in the description. And uh, very nice packing job. Look at this. Styrofoam inside the box and then all this paper. It, it is warm in there. Heat pads. Big time. Very nice. Thank you, Manny. You're 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 awesome. Eric, you're awesome too. All right, guys. Jim's gonna help us here. We're gonna go ahead and I did a water change while waiting on them to acclimate. Uh, kind of like try and get it in the bucket, Jim. That'd be nice. Wow, wow. <laughs> Come on, buddy. There he goes. Okay, and that was Franklin Pet Center in Long Island, New York. And there you go. Owner's name is Manny. There he goes. Yeah, he puffed up a little bit, didn't he? Mm -hmm. So Franklin Pet Center in Long Island, New York, and uh, visit them, check them out. Look at that. So then we got these two here, and that one there from Jason still. So now we've got the trio of Mabu Puffers. We got the ultimate deal. Thank you, man, that's awesome of you. And thank you, Eric, Mabaka's dad. And today we have a special guest. You guys are gonna like this. Um, check out check out the, the video here in a second, and uh, we're going to have a good time with this guest. I'm back. <laughs> Usually we're, we're collecting bass and bluegills in lakes when I'm working. Oh, yeah, you guys remember we went to the Parker Pond and collected all those bass and released them in the Metro Lady Parks? Yes, Skyler helped too, yes. And so you are? I'm Mike Erkleck. I'm the fish biologist for Cleveland Metro Parks. Yes, the Metro Parks guy. We work with all kinds of different people, and, and you've been fun to work with so far. <laughs> hey, um, I learned from Rich maybe once or twice. He learned some bullshit from me, so uh, I learn you, every you time I'm with you. Fish person that you can learn some stuff from. And Skyler's teaching me some stuff too. Mostly, she admitted is made up though. <laughs> okay, now you were just telling me a story about the the fish. What? Uh, red side dates because we yes. were just appreciating the archer fish in yes. Rich's tank here. He's of course he's camera shy. He slammed away when we started talking about him. But um, there are South American fish bits of bubble of water that like insects on leaves overhanging the Amazon River, whatever, uh, knocks them down and eats them. We have a fish called a red side dace here. Not close related, but um, we call that convergent evolution. Two similar kind of things that evolve in a fish in this case, even though they're not closely related other than being bony fishes, 
And in this case, it's an upturned mouth. We call that a superior mouth. Subterminal, like if it's a sucker pointing down. But right. superior, that's usually the first clue. That fish either feeds on the surface or is always looking up finding its food. In the case of the red side dace, they are uh, notorious for catching, they say, insects on the wing, which means if like there's mosquitoes or whatever flying low over the creek, they have a super cool skill set of being able to jump out of the water and catch that flying insect. Oh, that would be I cool know. to see. And they do like to jump. I've transferred them in an aquarium, and you always have to, I'm sorry, a cooler, uh, and you always have to have the lid down because right. they don't jump, jump. But it's just a, kind of a cool evolutionary thing. Awesome. Yeah, look for that upturned mouth. Um, arowana are another one that similarly um, yes. feed on or near the surface. They pluck they have jumped out of trees and eaten, you know, small rodents and monkeys out of trees. Monkeys. <laughs> it's a monkey eater. Yes. All right. Well, that's very nice hearing these stories from you, and we'll continue the tour. All right. What did you say about a bowfin? Well, we're just talking about our native bowfin. It's a really prehistoric fish. Um, looks a lot like a snakehead, even though, again, convergent evolution. They just, they're not close related, but they look very similar. It's kind of like nature's way of, like, similar solutions for similar challenges. But unfortunately, occasionally, like a local angler catches a bowfin, and um, well, I'll tell the story first. So it's one of our ranges in Metro Parks calls me, and he's like, Mike, we got a guy down here fishing by the Rocky River Marine, and he just got a snakehead. I'm like, immediately I think bowfin. Right. I'm like, I'm like Sergeant Conroy, he's since retired. I'm like, do you have a photo of it? You can send it. He goes, better yet, I got the fish here in a bucket. I'm like, oh great, bring it on over. So he brings it over to my office, with its head bastard. This guy, oh. the fisherman angler meant well, but he thought it was a snakehead and it was a bad thing, so he beat the hell out of it and inadvertently killed a, a really cool native fish. Fortunately, they're not really. Ri if you find the right habitat, they like like wetland habitats with yeah. a lot of vegetation. Killbuck Marsh in Worcester, full of them, some of the Lake Erie marshes, there's quite a few, but um, that was kind Michigan, of a rarity too, in the river. A ton of them in Michigan. Okay, yep. You find the right habitat, they can be. But that was a sad story, but somebody meant well. But I guess the moral of that story is learn your damn native fishes so you don't <laughs> kill stuff that doesn't need to die. Well, along those same lines, we had a boat in here that was like 20 inches, mm -hmm. maybe 22, for a long time. And everyone, everyone online is like, I thought, uh, you know, giant snake heads weren't allowed. And no, you know, they they look so yep, similar. They do. They look very similar. So, yep. so, well, thank you for that story, Mike. Yeah. Okay, so you just found out that we have a goonch here, and you had yeah. a little story about him. Well, <laughs> um, now I'm relaying something that I heard on River Monsters. But oh, well, if you heard it on the River Monsters, it must be true. <laughs> yes, there you go. I heard it on TV, you know it's true. So Rich had said that there's rumors or cases where they think they pulled, like, small children underwater, that kind of thing. And yeah. on that show, they claim, where these things hit up in India, the Indian mountains, the big rivers there, um, a lot of times when somebody passes away, they build a raft, kind of a crude raft out of logs. They put the, the body on there and start it ablaze. Like and an old send Viking it down funeral. The river, like a Viking funeral. But um, the room, well, the hypothesis was that the goonch in that river, which grew to be a couple hundred pounds, got a taste for human flesh because the bodies don't get fully burnt. They sink and supposedly they, they eat them. I'm not sure if I buy that. But it well, makes, that's a barbecue it for the fish. Story, at least. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the fish get absolutely massive. Yes. But he did come to the conclusion they, they don't, even a several hundred pound goonch, its mouth is not big enough to eat an adult human. So whether they might occasionally take a kid or a pet or a body in pieces in the river, maybe, but they, they're not capable of eating an adult human. Well, right. I mean, I know you felt, you know, when a cat just bites on your hand. Oh, yeah. They chomp. A big one? It doesn't have to be a it big can, one. Like you can easily take them down. Yes, I agree. And they say, like, you're in their element in the water. So, like, right. um, I actually see, they say, you know, a person, say you're 150 pounds, 200 pounds for sake of argument, like, you're still no match for a 30 or 50 pound fish in the water because, you know, you're not equipped to have mobility in water and swim. And, I mean, the fish is. So, right. it's not a fair fight, basically. <laughs> a vegetarian fish. They eat fruits and things like that. They introduced them outside of their native range. I think it was Papua New Guinea. Yeah, and there I think was it this. Works. Well, do you remember the crazy what was happening to men specifically there? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I do. They were getting their main parts bit off, not the above part, the two yeah. below parts. And the hypothesis was that these Papu thought they were fruits hanging there. I, sounds crazy. 
All I know is some dudes in Papua New Guinea had a very bad experience bathing in the and river. And they got the and nickname Ball Eaters. Eaters. The Ball Eater, yes. <laughs> so all the great stuff we learned from River Monsters. But see, here's, here's, here's the thing on, on that whole situation. Just like Piranha. You yeah. can go to the pet store and stick your arm in a Piranha tank and they will yeah. hide from you. It is a, a thing of, of, of starvation when the yeah. waters get so wide and yeah. they bring it down and now they're in their little ponds yeah. and they are just starving to death. They're going to eat each other. They'll eat anything that comes in the water. Yeah. It's different than what we have here. We swim with the Paku. They don't bother us, yeah. you know, I mean, but we keep them fed. You guys have seen me in the predator pond before. I've been absolutely fine. None of the fish have bothered me. Are you brave enough to swim in there in your mermaid outfit? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I've done it multiple times. Rich, have, Rich have you gone in the Paku tank? Skinny dipping? Uh, no, and no, that would not would be a smart thing it. to do. <laughs> well, Rich was just surprised. I knew that he donated some of his deceased fish to Case Western Reserve University. So I guess the first lesson here is, you know, us fish people, it's like this inbred small community where we all know each other. Jo Jody, of course. But we do. I wouldn't say inbred. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, I was. But, um, so... A guy that used to work for me, Owen Lockhart, fantastic employee, he, um, he is now managing the biology lab at Case, and Dr. Ron Oldfield, who teaches ichthyology or fish biology there, yeah, he's the one um, that got brought him me. over some of these fish, and Owen was the one who had to find a way to um, basically preserve and keep, like, I think he said it was a three-foot-long carpet, so, you know, you're not, they don't fit your average sample jar, so we had to kind <laughs> no. of scramble, and I think it ended up in their freezer there, but, yeah. you know. It's good to know that though they go to an educational institution. Well, you know, even after they pass away, they don't. They're they don't still helping away. the community and they're yeah. they're doing education. Yeah, yep. um, not all of our fish, but you know, a couple in the past, you know, four years or so, I've donated mm. to them. So, cool. but yeah, it, it helps out. When we were talking about the goonch, uh, the catfish that grow to a couple hundred pounds, um, yeah. we we were also brought up the Wells European Wells catfish, which grow even bigger, like really? five like hundred to eight, eight feet, eight hundred pounds. Yep. At some point. Crazy big, but yeah. um, Rich actually has an albino wells that are just a baby by comparison. But well, yeah, they're crazy. I, I got to admit, I've been waiting to tell you this. Okay, that is a Chinese wells, uh, and they only get to about four foot. Okay, well, <laughs> looks exactly the same. Big enough for me, right? The difference is the 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 European wells has uh, the six barbs, and the the Chinese wells only has four. Okay, that's the only difference, but I and size, of course. But yeah, they're they're, they're really neat. Yeah, I, I I had a large wells here mm -hmm. long before, you know, when they were illegal. And, uh, you know, I traded it off for somebody else or something. And then he ended up, he had it until it was five foot long. Mm -hmm. And then somebody called on him and it got taken from him. Okay. Yeah, it was horrible. Oh, that's unfortunate. Yeah, and he was albino too. Okay. Beautiful fish. I think my favorite fish I was just of the day you that. is, I love the, um, the white the alligator albino. gar. The albino just albino. absolutely The platinum, beautiful. yeah. He's solid white. I mean, it's like and good quality white. There's like, no specks of yeah, color at just, all. It's like snow white. And especially snow white's with a good all way to. Dark fish in the tank like stands out even more. Like it's the only. Uh, oh, now there's somebody. Over there. That's a. There's two of them. Two of the uh, white ones. I won't ask Rich. This is like asking who your favorite child is. But I already know what Rich's favorite fish. Is. Oh, it <laughs> does. Okay. It's Brutus. It's their pylon. Okay, Brutus. That's my boy. How well uh, is he about five foot, six he's foot? Six he's six. Foot. Yeah, well, oh, wow. I'd say six, okay. but uh, the other people are claiming more. But he's Damn. six foot. But we've had him here. He just turned three. Mm -hmm. We had him here since he was like eighteen inches. Oh wow! So he grew this big in this these three years. Well, um, I was not prepared for the violence of that fish eating. Like <laughs> Skyler threw in a handful of whatever pellets, and um. It, I can only describe it like an explosion and that mouth open and sucked them all in. Mike jumped back and let out a little squeal like a girl a little so bit. A little bit. I jumped up and Skyler <laughs> held me and said, Don't worry, I won't let him hurt you. How <laughs> funny. Air climber can jump over fishermen's boats and knock them off yeah. in the water. They're they're, they're powerful fish. Yeah. I think they might have broke he thought his ribs were. No, broken. It, no, it screwed up his heart. Oh wow. It was like permanent Yikes. damage from it. Yeah. Actually, that's one of the concerns about the uh, Asian carp, which is kind of a generic term because all the carp are European Asian descent. But when you are hear you that, talking about the big headed? Carp? It would be the big head and the silver carp. The now we have them. Them. You have some here. Yeah, three okay. of them. Fortunately, we don't have them out, out at large in the environment. Because in addition to the ecosystem concerns, 
they're, they get big. I mean, not Arapaima big, but they get up to 50, 60 pounds, especially yeah. the big head carp, and they jump, and they jump high. And, and there have been cases where someone's motor along, actually motor along your boat 30, 40 miles an hour, and a 40 pound fish hits you in the chest or the face. I mean, that could kill you or at the very least break some bones. So there, yeah. there is a safety concern, but fortunately they're not here in the Great Lakes more than the Ag- anomaly yet. But Again, people, do out. not release your fish yes. into any open waterways. Yeah, don't release. Call Ohio Fish okay. Rescue or, uh, you know, your, your neighborhood wildlife, and they'll, they'll, they'll refer you what you should do with them. It can destroy the entire ecosystem. Rich was just introducing us to his alligator snappy turtle friend, which actually is a small one to get way bigger than that. I think 200 pounds or so? Yeah. But even though they, That's other than size, they look similar to our common snapping turtle here in Northeast Ohio, other than this one gets way bigger and has kind of a more gnarled appearance. But um, they feed very different. Like this, It's like a gentle giant compared to our snapping turtle, which will... It'll grab live things, dead things, kind of an opportunistic scavenger. The, the alligator snapping turtle, it's all kind of subdued brown, like the mud and mossy logs around it. But it opens its mouth, which is also dark, but its tongue has a little pink appendage. It looks exactly like a little worm, and it wiggles it and wiggles it while with sitting motionless with open. its mouth open. Yeah. And if I was a fish, I've seen videos, I could not resist that little worm. It looks like an easy morsel to eat. They come in, you try to grab it, and it's like Oh, it's out. over so, with. You know. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah, but, um, even not alligator snapper, even just snapping turtles. Mm-hmm. We caught one last year that was about this big. Is that what you were, you got a grass carp too or something? Or yeah, I got a grass carp. Oh, he's here. Back there. Yeah. I mean, is that the same place? I thought, no, okay, different places. I'm mixing up, yeah. Okay, so... so you, uh, yeah, Rich just filled us in that um, he has paddlefish, a couple of them in his pond here, and they grow big too. Uh, very closely related to the sturgeons, like a shark, they have a cartilage in the skeleton, so does the sturgeon. But um, we were talking that really cool the paddle off the front of the face force, technically called the rostrum. Like, folks, before they knew better, hypothesized, they used that to like turn over rocks looking for food. Well, no. Those fish are filter feeders, right. and that rostrum is covered in electrical and chemical receptors, and the thought is they use it to find concentrations of plankton to feed. So during the course of my graduate research, because that's a fish I studied when I got my master's degree on the Ohio River and Scioto Rivers, we'd occasionally find decapitated paddle, head chopped off. Um, we're talking about four-foot fish. We're like, at first we're like, what kind of sicko is doing this to these fish, you know? Right. And they're just, or maybe they're scared because they're different. Who the hell knows? But um, over the course of continuing my work, um, we not only found them with com- heads completely chopped off, we found them with various amounts of that rostrum or paddle chopped cleanly off. And then the real aha moment is, I looked back behind my outboard motor one day, and there's a little paddle fish. It's swimming right up into my propeller. He stopped short, fortunately. But the thought, kind of the hypothesis I put together is, there's electrical, certainly discharge coming off your motor. Um, there's obviously turbulence with the water. Whatever attracts them, that fish was attracted to my propeller. That's a little motor with a little fish. I'm thinking back to these big four foot long, five foot long paddle fish with their heads cleanly chopped off. Have you ever seen a commercial barge and a propeller oh, on those? Yeah. Like we're talking like 10 foot diameter, maybe more. I mean, you swim into one of those, you're yeah. losing your head. So um, kind of put a two and two together and it seemed like that's what was happening. Wow. But not a, a feel good story, but at least it was a bit of a mystery and it didn't have his dark of a reasons behind its probably well, origin. Our paddlefish are safe in here. Yes. Don't be driving, when you put a motor on the tugboat, don't be driving it out here in the, in, the, in the pond. Okay, we just came in from outside, and Skyler, are you having a hard time seeing? Um, maybe just a little bit. Look at how foggy your glasses got. Yeah. Some, Had make, a fun time. Big some little windshield wipers on those. Yeah, they're all fogged up. They use this the pool fish room for entertainment, turn the lights down, they have a, a disco ball, a jacuzzi, a, a screen. But he said that you float around in, in the pool here and, and sometimes, you know, turn the lights down and watch jaws or whatever. I asked if the fish ever nibble your feet or bump you, and apparently Skyler has a story. Yeah, I do have a story. <laughs> so the first time I ever went in, I asked that question. Rich said no, never. Okay. And then Josh uh, said, it's not a good idea to get in. They haven't been fed today yet. <laughs> I and have so a feeling I this is a setup. So Josh was messing with it. <laughs> so I got in already. I went in all the way, you know, I did the whole thing. Mm-hmm. 
And then I just found out only a couple days ago that one of the alligator guard grabbed Josh's foot and tried to drag him under. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's, 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 that's a bit drastic, but... Wow. <laughs> well, they were pulling on him. Me, me and Josh were carrying a filter, and I, you know the pool that I keep the stingrays in? Uh-huh. I had walked over the, the pool, and I'm inside the pool now with the alligator gar and the stingrays, and I'm carrying mine into the filter. It's pretty heavy. Josh puts a leg in, and then his other leg, and then we start walking, and then Josh starts like dancing, like moving like this. I'm like, Ooh. Josh, quit messing around, boy. This right. thing's heavy. Yeah. He's like, Dad, fish has got me. And he's bouncing all around, right? And he's still holding on to his end, but you know, his leg is like, he's like he's yeah. dancing. And I, I, I look over and I'm like, because I was like, there's no way a fish has got you. This yeah. alligator gar had done put his mouth on top of Josh's foot and under his foot and wow. barefoot and was shaking him left and right and oh. wasn't letting go, you know. And this is an alligator gar that we had put in there that hasn't eaten yet. It's been yeah. like two months he was here yeah. and he's just never ate. The first thing he decided to eat was Josh's foot. <laughs> Well, Josh, you guys never told me that before I got into the pool. Any of the well, time. because these guys don't bother you because we keep them fed. You know, they're well, they're always fed. Still, <laughs> it would have been nice to know. Well, what he's trying to say is they were willing to sacrifice you. Yeah, yeah. Like sacrificial they knew Skyler. You that way. <laughs> wow, good stories. <laughs> okay, so Mike's getting ready to leave. So we thank you for coming by. I appreciate it. We've learned a lot of knowledgeable things from you, and uh, you know. You, what you do for the Metro Parks is amazing, and I will continue helping you out. Any other jobs you got and want, you know, we'll, we'll help out. Well, mm-hmm. let me say, um, I've heard for years, like, you got to see this fish rescue compound. It's even cooler than it looks in videos. It looks pretty damn cool in videos. <laughs> like, it is. If When Rich does public tours, which you occasionally do, I encourage you, if you haven't been out here already, um, make a trip up to see it. It's super cool. So. Well, thank and, you. There's a lot of surprises. It's not just fish. Rich has other cool stuff too. Yeah, and I'll tell you what. Classic everyone that comes here, yeah, everyone that comes here is like, oh my god, these fish and these tanks are so much yeah. bigger in person yep. than they saw from the video. So my favorite was the white alligator gar. There's so many cool fish. They are. That is just one that it's just so stark contrast everything around. Oh, it. let me tell you a little story about that. That was a, a, a good friend of mine, John. He actually asked me to hold on to him. He bought them. I, I don't know. I think they were three grand a piece or something like that. Mm-hmm. They were about. Eight ten inches. Okay. He asked me to hold on to him. He's moving from Ohio to Michigan, and he has to move his nail salon and everything, open up the new nail salon up there. Okay. In the process, I didn't hear from him for like six months. He finally gets hold of me, and he's like, Rich, there's nothing I can do. I broke the tank in the move. Mm-hmm. I, I can't, you know, come get them back. I can't afford another tank right now. I got to wow. get my business open. Yeah. He goes, go ahead and sell them and put the money towards the rescue. Oh. And I'm like, John, no, I can't do that to you. I will grow them out here, and you can watch them grow on, on, online all the time okay. and come visit them and stuff like that. And he was just tickled pink. Oh, wow. And they've been out there. Now they're three foot and a little over three foot. They're, that is super cool. Yeah, so uh, they got to yeah, grow them out and, and watch them. You know? he, he comes by once a year or so. Yeah, and cool. uh, he offered Tracy all the free nails she can do, you know, yeah. get and stuff. But so she's just too far away in Michigan. Yeah. And look who showed up. Reaper showed up. <laughs> so, well, all right. thanks again for opening up your home to me. It was it was uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah. And um, probably won't be my last visit. <laughs> well, thanks for coming I by, Mike. I saw the food menu in your kitchen. I'm coming back for millionaire bacon night. <laughs> <laughs> he saw the hillbilly breakfast. He goes, ooh, I'm coming for that. <laughs> we just recently had that, too. I made it for Skyler. Skyler? Yeah, it was very good. <laughs>